Hi, this is Jerry Warhofdig again, and this is the second of two videos on making hollow beads. Uh, the first video I used a standard 330 second mandrel. In this video, I'm going to be using a mandrel that is actually a tube. It is called a puffy mandrel. It has a hole in one side, um, and so you can use it to inflate the bead. Now, the end of a puffy mandrel should be closed with bead release. And when you store them, remember to store puffy mandrels on something like a block of wood. If you put them in sand, if you put them in styrofoam, they're just gonna get clogged up and essentially useless. Um, in the next video in this series, I'm going to show you how to dip and clean puffy mandrels, as well as how to clean hollow beads. Right now, I'm going to make a hollow bead on a puffy mandrel. You can see my hole is right there in the bead release. I hope you can see it through the flame. And as I did in the last video, I'm using black soft glass, which is a transparent color. And as I discussed in the last video, because the puffy mandrel enables me to inflate my bead, I am comfortable with slightly thicker discs of glass, and I know that as the bead is inflating, I do not have to worry that the weight of the walls of the bead will collapse the bead since I can always inflate it using breath. Now, remember from the disc tutorial, which was uh, an earlier video, if you're going to pinch your discs to make them thinner, you can only pinch them outside that first wrap that's attached to the bead release. If you try to pinch them where they're attached to the bead release, uh, what will happen is your bead release will break. So here, you're gonna see me build a hollow bead exactly the way I did in the last video where I used a standard mandrel. At this stage, the only difference that you might notice is that my discs are thicker. I still need to be mindful of keeping my discs warm, just the way one would have to do with a standard mandrel, but they are certainly less shocky. This one's a little tilted to the left. That's why I'm straightening it up. They're less shocky because they're thicker. Now, every time I take a new rod of glass, as I just did, um, I always clean off the tip by just tweezing it off. And that's what I'm doing here. After I pull this off though, I will be mindful that my discs have been out of the flame and I'll go back and warm them up. But may have even cracked one. I thought I heard a little noise. Let's see what happens. So I'm going to keep adding glass, wrapping it onto these two discs. This is how we'll find out if one is cracked. It'll go flying all over the table. But I am definitely adding these wraps of glass to be heavier than the wraps I used in the standard mandrel video. Now, the other thing is you will find that some people use the puffy mandrel because they can double and triple encase a hollow bead. Now what that means is they make a hollow bead and they get it to its finished shape. Then they take another color. Perhaps the first bead is um, transparent or, or even clear, and the second color might be something like ivory or white, a color known to be soupy and difficult to blow hollows from. But if you have this nice transparent core, you can then encase the bead with the second color and it looks like an ivory hollow or a white hollow. And I, I did uh, give the admins on the Facebook uh, group that this tutorial will be posted on a couple of beads that are 
ivory in appearance, but in truth, underneath the ivory is a much stiff, stiffer glass. I think it's a, an amber transparent. So I continue to remember to heat the faces of the discs. The flame is going up, hitting this disc, and then the inside of that one. And I turn it, and then I can do it the other way. So now the face on the other side is getting warm. And at this point where the discs are as high as I intend to make them, I'm gonna start wrapping my discs just slightly to the inside of the previous disc. Now, as I said in the last video, it's just impo as important here that the wrap of glass you are adding and the edge that you're applying it to be fairly close in temperature to one another. So I will roll this disc in the flame, the right hand disc, and then start to add the glass. I hope you could see that it just started to have a dull glow before I came through with this wrap of molten black. Now, I can keep going, um, you know, some people like to build uh, one uh, tall disc and one small one. I like to build my discs fairly symmetrically. And I think the reason that I've gotten into the habit of doing that is because after each wrap, it kind of gives me the excuse to stop and warm the discs. Now, if you're warming your discs, but you see that they are glowing hot, you're too close to the hottest part of the flame. What you need to do is back away from the torch head, maybe move out here a little bit, and just give those discs a nice bath of heat. You don't want to see them glowing. You certainly don't want to see them moving. Um, you're just keeping them warm enough that they won't shock. And just like um, when I'm using a solid mandrel, I'm building them toward each other and trying not to have pinholes that I'm gonna have to go back and patch. Well, how do you avoid the pinholes? Oh, we'll talk about that in the video on troubleshooting, which I'm going to do in a couple of days, but the shortest answer at the moment is make sure that you are adding molten glass to fairly warm, almost hot glass. And by that I mean heating the rim of the disc where you are about to add glass will give you a hotter connection and enable your wraps to uh, be in full contact, not giving you that little eek, 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 inchworm that people complain about. I doubt that's the sound of an inchworm. So talking so much, I've, my wraps are not as, as uh, lovely as perhaps I'd like them to be, but you can see that with this molten wrap, I am very close to closing up my gap. Um, now, there are many variations in hollow bead shapes, no matter what mandrel you're using. If you build these discs up taller, you may find that your beads are rounder. If you start with two discs that are very far apart, you're gonna have a wide uh, bead with a low profile. These are all variations. You can see that I have one long stripe here of empty space between the discs, and I'm just filling that with a molten gather. I've heard that described as zipping it up when you kind of just make sure that you're connected. I see one little hole right there and I think this hollow bead is closed. Now, as I warm up this hollow bead, here's a difference between the solid mandrel and the puffy mandrel. Because this bead is going to start to get molten and the weight of the walls are going to push down toward the mandrel. What I'm going to do, I see a little bit of an open spot there, so I'm closing it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure to keep a finger or my palm over the open end of the mandrel. That way the bead cannot collapse and force all the hot air 
out the open end of the tube. And basically, I will keep my finger over the open end of the tube until I put this bead uh, mandrel into my mouth to inflate it. I do this in a position that has both my hands on the same side of the torch. There are other options. We'll go into those in troubleshooting. Um, you could use a piece of cork instead of your finger to block the mandrel. You could also use a blow hose so that you do not have to bring the mandrel up to your mouth. And these are all options that we'll explore in troubleshooting. I want you to just get the basics down for now. So what I'm doing is heating the bead. I see one little spot there where I think maybe there's an opening. I'm just moving the glass over. Remember, I want to avoid adding extra glass if I can, because it just add, makes a heavy spot. Again, when we get to troubleshooting, if your bead doesn't inflate evenly, one of the reasons could be that your walls are not of an equal thickness. So I'm taking the time to slowly heat the entire bead. And now I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen because once this is in my mouth, I can't really tell you. I'm going to let this become a molten hollow bead that will look just like uh, a hollow bead made on a, a regular old mandrel. I'm going to keep rotating it. I'm going to bring it up to my mouth and while rotating it, I'm going to give it a gentle blow. And as I watch it expand and stiffen up, and I can see all that because I can just look straight down the mandrel from my mouth toward the end where the bead is. Um, I'm gonna sort of slow down my blowing because you don't want to uh, pop it like a balloon. It, it, you're looking for about a 30% expansion and that's a very rough number. It depends on how much glass you added, how big the bead is, how hard you blow, what kind of glass you're using, but rough rule of thumb, 20 to 30%. So I see an even glow in the entire bead. I'm rotating, it's a hollow bead, certainly. I'm going to bring it up to my mouth, still rotating. I'm gonna move it to block the end. Sometimes I use my lip or my tongue. And then as I see the glow start to diminish, I am going to start gently blowing and you should see the bead inflate if my camera man does his job. So here we go. So you have to be sure that you're keeping the bead on center as you blow. I, I think I may have blown it a little bit past the ideal point because I see that it's expanded a little more on this side, but it's a nice hollow bead. It uh, certainly is hollow and it is a little bigger than the one I did on a solid mandrel. What, um, what you can look for as you're blowing essentially is reading the heat base of the bead to be about the same temperature as when you would pull a twisty or a stringer. Um, you need the glass to be moving, but you don't want it to be soup. So there's the puffy mandrel hollow bead. And as I said, in a few days, I'll do a video on uh, preparing the mandrels, troubleshooting any problems and cleaning the beads, all of which people ask me about all the time.